goodness, so there are a number of organizations that are really pitching in to help these people out. So after receiving assistance here under FEMA, now nearly one year later, their time has expired. Their options are few. They can either stay with friends and family, head into New York City's already overwhelmed shelter system, or find themselves out on the streets. After Hurricane Maria struck the island of Puerto Rico in September 2017, hundreds of thousands of families were left with uninhabitable living conditions, many without a home. La tumbo Maria. Tumbo Maria. <laughs> sí, se llevó todo. According to estimates, nearly 400,000 Puerto Ricans fled the island looking for help on the mainland. While some stayed with relatives, others were placed into shelters or under FEMA's temporary shelter assistance program. Since the start of the program, more than 7,000 TSA applicants checked into participating hotels for temporary housing. When I first came here, there was nothing. Nobody knew what to do with me. This woman, who wanted to remain anonymous in her federal assistance, lost her home in the mountainous town of Calle. She and her husband were placed into a local New York City shelter. They just set up us in, in a room that it was so dirty. It had mouse traps. It had two dirty beds. Soon after, they were transferred into a nearby hotel under TSA. But things were about to change. On August 30th, after multiple deadline extensions, a federal judge ruled to end FEMA's funding of the program. Last Friday, September 14th, was the final checkout date. These individuals came to the United States because FEMA said we can give you some temporary assistance lived in a temporary assistance and now are suffering. Juan Cartagena is the president and general counsel of Latino Justice, a national civil rights organization who filed a restraining order to stop FEMA from ending the program back in June. So what happens to these families now? Many of them just had to find ways to live temporarily with other people. Cartagena our credits staff, the many organizations know, pitching in to help, like the New York Disaster Interfaith Services. Until Friday, there were a remaining 34 four families in TSA hotels, six families moved in with family uh, or friends that are here in the city and the rest have gone into the New York City shelter system. FEMA says they have been offering direct lease and multifamily lease and repair programs as well as two months of financial rental assistance through vouchers. Two months of rental assistance based on your Puerto Rico rent. Nobody is going to rent you an apartment based on those vouchers uh, and you can't get an apartment without a job and a credit rating. As for the woman from Calle, she says she and her husband are now employed and plan to get an apartment. Do you have a plan to go back? I wish I could go back so much. I miss the food, everything, but right now it's not possible unless I save a lot of money and then rebuild. I'm just grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to have a job. I'm looking forward to do what's coming new in my life. And we wish her the very best. So why are people like this woman I spoke with having so much difficulty rebuilding back on the island? Well, for one, many didn't have insurance policies. Others were never issued a deed for their homes. And without a deed, you can't get federal assistance. Now, the woman I spoke with said she, she was offered a loan from FEMA, but with no job on the island because of the economy, she said she would never be able to pay it back. Now, of course, for more information on these organizations pitching in to help, head to Pix11.com. We'll be